All right, so getting on with chapter four, um, just as mentioned in chapter three, you are gonna be needing to take a lot of notes for this one. Um, a lot of the key codes and the number codes that you receive, um, they vary for every person. Um, they're randomly generated across each save file. So what you see on my video is most likely not gonna match what is showing on your um, screen. So just keep that in mind. If you don't have a pen and paper ready, now is a really good time to get it. So once you are ready, go ahead and interact with the right box on the floor down here and open it up and move that top paper to get a little blueprint piece. Exit out of this box, interact with the middle one, and just toss out all of these shoes and underneath the last red one is gonna be a key. So pick up that key, exit out of the box, and interact with the cabinet just above the boxes. And as you can see, there's a little keyhole on the right hand door. So use the key in the keyhole to unlock it, open it up, pick up that screwdriver, open up the left door, and as you can see, there is a spider web in here, and you are gonna need to click on six of these for the spider web trophy. So go ahead and interact with it and get a little bit of dialogue. Exit out of here, interact with the bottom left corner of the room, and you'll see Trevor the mouse has appeared in his little hole down here. So be sure to zoom in on him and interact with him a couple of times to get all the dialogue. For the talk time with trevor trophy this is required as you are about to get that and then exit out of trevor and then uh, use the screwdriver on the vent just to the right once it's open head on inside and just go straight ahead and you'll get a little cut scene with ruby right now i told you to end agent a quickly <laughs> you have your ways i have mine you shouldn't have done it like that. <sighs> now the world knows how pathetic M.I.A. really are. Besides, once you locate Agent B, we can finish M.I.A. for good. No one will be able to stop us. <sighs> I'm sending your next mission now. Sit tight. Mission supplies will be dropping in shortly. Ruby, do not go rogue and jeopardize this mission again. Now that Agent A is dead, I'm quite content. All right, and when that cutscene is done, if you just look straight down the vent, you'll notice that there's another spider web in the top left corner up here. Go ahead and interact with that to get the little dialogue. And then turn right and interact with the vent a couple of times to break it open and go inside the next room. So in here, there's only about two things that we can do so far or up until this point, I should say. Interact with the table that is just in front of the TV and you're gonna pick up this little cheese sandwich. And then in the very back of the room, uh, next to the door with the red one on it, interact with the left plant to reveal a red button. Zoom in, hit the red button, and a lever will appear just to the left of that. So while we're here, you want to make a note of the color painting that is just to the left of the lever and just make a note of the order and the columns and lines that the colors are on as you are going to be needing this just a little later. And look at this like one out of two that'll tell you um, the second part that we'll need for that puzzle. So once you have made a note of that, go ahead and hit the lever and the room is going to change a little bit. And then go ahead and zoom into the yellow monitor in the back with the one on it and there's going to be a little blueprint piece on the desk so pick that up and we're just going to head back to the room that we started in okay and interact with the right wall where the blueprint is hanging and just put both pieces up on here and this will give you the code that you need to uh, um, receive security clearance level one access. So once again, this is gonna be different for everybody. The one that is showing on my screen right now will not match the one that you have. So be sure to make a note of what you see on your screen, not mine. So this number right here is the one we're looking for. So exit out of this blueprint, interact with the lower left wall, and when Trevor appears, go ahead and zoom in on him and give him the cheese sandwich. 
and in return he'll give you a key and just click on him a couple more times to make sure you get the talk with talk time with Trevor trophy. So once that unlocks, exit out of this area. And if you look on the left wall, there is a little hole um, kind of next to the rubble. So interact with that to zoom in. And the wall here is broken. So just keep clicking on it to reveal a box and it's locked, but you just grab the key for that. So use the key on the lock to open it up and pick up the CD that's inside. Exit out of the box, and we're going to go back through the vent into the room that we were just in. So go straight, turn right, go straight, and head back to the yellow monitor with the big one on it and zoom all the way in. And pop that CD in the little CD slot on the bottom right. And now you're going to put in the code that was on the blueprint on the wall. So once again, yours is going to be different from mine. Just make sure that you put in the one that was showing on your screen. Okay, and once you're done, hit enter. And now you have level one security clearance. So when the CD pops out, go ahead and pick that up and exit out away from the monitor. And across the room, the door that we were at previously, uh, the panel is now blinking green, letting us know we can go through. So hit the button on the panel, and when the door opens, interact with the doorway to go inside. And we won't be able to do too much here. Um, as you can see, we don't have uh, security clearance level two, so we can't go through that door. And we also need two to go into the elevator, and we don't have the puzzle pieces for this bottom puzzle. But if you look at the left wall, you will notice that there are five miscolored bricks up here. And you basically need to hit these in the correct order to reveal a hidden staircase. And that order is going to be the top right, the middle right, the top left, the bottom left, and then the bottom right. All right, and once that staircase is showing, go ahead and interact with that to go up. And now we are outside. And as you can see, the path in front of us splits going forward and going right. To start, go ahead and go right and interact with the little box down below you. You can open this up now if you want. Um, this is where we are going to gain security uh, clearance level four, which we won't be doing until the uh, end of chapter four. But on top of this box is a little squiggly antenna. You need to hit this quickly 10 times in a row. Um, to get the boing 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 trophy so just spam cross on top of it and then the trophy will unlock and once it does all right and once it does go ahead and interact with the tree on the right hand side and pick up the blueprint that is in that tree and exit back to where the path splits and now just go forward just a little bit on here and as you can see, there's a communications tower just in front of you. So interact with the little hut on the left-hand side and interact with the left panel. And this is just to show you that this is where we are gonna gain security clearance level two, and that'll be happening shortly. But for now, go along the right side of the communications tower. And if you just touch the fence, you will notice that it is electrified. So to get the bad hair day trophy, you need to just hold on to the fence by holding down X. And you want to do this for about 10 seconds or so, and then the trophy will unlock. So just wait for it. And there we go. So once it unlocks, interact with the red box, pick up the blueprint on top of it, and exit back down to where the path splits. Okay, and as you can see, there is a little bit of a fan vent thing over here on the left-hand side. Just interact with that really quick. And as you can see inside, there is a blueprint piece that we are not able to pick up just yet, but I'm just letting you know that there is one there so that when we go to grab it, you know where it came from. So exit back and head back on inside, all the way back to the front room and the room that we started in. and interact with the wall on the right hand side 
place your blueprint pieces. And this will give you the code to unlock security access level two. And once again, your code is gonna be different than the one that is showing on the screen right now. Make sure you are making note of the one that you see on your screen, not on mine, because they are gonna be different. So once you have that code, go ahead and head back through the vent. And we're gonna go back to the communications tower where we electrified ourselves and picked up that last blueprint piece. So go through the vents, turn to the right, Go straight ahead, go through the door across the room, go up the stairs, and then just go straight and all the way to the little hut on the left of the tower. So zoom in on the monitor, place the CD in the CD slot, and then put in the code that you have um, from your notes, not the code that I'm about to put in mine, because again, they are different. So make sure you're putting in yours. And then once you're ready, hit enter, and that'll give you access to security level two and the doors associated with them. When the CD pops out, go ahead and pick that up and head back on inside. All right, once you're inside, you'll notice that the door on the right-hand side is now blinking green, letting you know that it's been unlocked. So hit that button and the door will open. Head on inside. So once you're in, pick up the wrench, interact with the desk on the left, pick up the remote control, and just make a note of this painting that is on the table here. Um, this is gonna be a light puzzle that we need to complete in chapter five. Um, I'll show you how to do that when we get there, but this is the solution for that in case you are doing this on your own or trying to do it on your own. So once you have seen that, over on the right-hand side is a jetpack. Zoom in on the jetpack and hit the red button to send it off. And as you can see, it just broke the cupboard on the left-hand side. So now that that's open, zoom in on it and pick up the bucket on the bottom shelf. And just for a little prep work for a later puzzle we're gonna be doing, interact with the very back of the room and you'll see there's a golden key hanging inside this shelf. Open up the latch, open up the door and the key will fall into the beaker. So that does need to happen and we will get that out shortly. But just as reference, because um, we will need to come back here, this is where the beaker and the key is. So once you have that, exit out of this room. And then interact with the elevator door. And then the button just to the left of it. And head on inside. And as you can see, there is a button that is blinking green. This is to basement level one, so go ahead and hit that. And as before, we won't really be able to do much here. We don't have security level three or four, so we can't go in those doors. So head over to the left wall and just take a quick look at this painting. Um, this is the two out of two, which goes with the color painting that we saw earlier. Just make a note of the circles versus the dots. The circles are the ones you wanna look for and match up the colors from the previous painting to it. And once we get to that puzzle, I'll just show you how to do it, but that's where it comes from. So once you have that, interact with the kitty door down below. And if you just swing it, you'll notice that there is a blueprint piece behind it. So once it's open, quickly pick up that blueprint piece and exit back out. And then hit floor zero once you're in the elevator. and back one room and at the front of this one you'll notice that this large shoot tube thing is now blinking as well this requires security level two which you now have so hit the button to open up the door go inside and we are actually going to go to ruby's house right now so this will bring you back to where we were in chapter one and chapter two so once you arrive, you'll notice the little cat on the right-hand side playing with a blueprint piece. Just interact with him to scare him off, pick up the blueprint, and then follow the cat upstairs. Once you're up here, there's gonna be another blueprint on the bottom left on the floor down here, so pick that up. 
go inside the room to the left, which is going to be the study. And on the back wall, you'll notice that there are two kitty paw prints on there. So interact with the wall where those are, pick up the blueprint piece, pick up the club's key, and hit the switch on the wall. And this will unveil the monitor that we need to gain security clearance level three, which we can't do just yet. So just keep in mind that this is where that monitor is going to be. Exit out of the study. And then head into the right room, which is going to be the bathroom. All right, and once you're in the bathroom, go ahead and interact with the shower to turn the water on. And the bucket you picked up earlier, we're going to fill that with water. So just select it over the water. And then once you have that, exit the bathroom, follow the cat prints forward into the room just ahead, and you'll see the cat is sitting on the bed after leaving all those dirty, muddy footprints. So interact with the cat to zoom in, pick up the blueprint piece right next to it. And while you're here, you wanna make a note of the name tag on the cat itself. As you can see, it says Onyx. You're gonna need that later for the password to the computer that we are gonna be using in chapter five. So exit out of the bedroom and head back downstairs to the lobby with the fish tank and interact with the fish tank to go back to the underground area. All right, and just keep going backwards until you reach the room that we started chapter four in and then interact with the blueprint on the right wall and just start placing the blueprint pieces in it. And now you have your code to unlock security access level three. Again, mine is gonna be different from yours. So make sure you are writing down the one that is showing on your screen and not the one that is showing on mine. So once you have that, exit out of this room and go into the vent. and then go to the right. And we're gonna head back into Ruby's house to use that monitor that had the big three on it. So use a little shoot on the left-hand side. Head up the stairs. Head into the room on the left. Zoom in on the monitor. Place the CD in the CD slot. And then put in the code that you had on your blueprint wall. So it's gonna be different than mine. Just make sure you're putting in yours. And then hit enter. And now we have level three security clearance. Once the CD pops out, go ahead and pick that up. Exit out of Ruby's house. We're just gonna go back down to the lobby with the fish tank and then go through the fish tank itself. Okay, and once you're back in here, go through the door right across the room with the green one next to it. And interact with the lift. And then we're gonna go down to basement floor one, which is the negative one button. And now that we have level three clearance, we can interact with the panel on the right hand side. So zoom in on that and hit the button and you will break it, but it, the door will still open enough so you can see this blueprint that is just below it. So once you can pick up the blueprint and exit on out and go back to floor zero. All right, and once you're here, interact with the stairs on the left-hand side and take the path going straight all the way back to the communications tower. And go over to the right-hand side. And as you can see, this is where the jetpack has landed. So zoom in on the jetpack and hit that red button. And it's just gonna fly off again. And now we're just gonna grab some quick supplies while we're here. So interact with the red box just in front of you. Use the wrench you picked up earlier on the bolt to open it up. 
and just throw the bucket of water inside the box to turn off the electricity. Open up the gate doors, interact with the ladder to climb up it, and you're just going to go up once and interact with the red box on the right hand side. Open it up, pick up the hose, and pick up the key card, and head back down inside. And head all the way back to the room that we started in. And interact with the blueprint on the right wall. And go ahead and put that blueprint, blueprint piece in it. And as you can see, we are missing one more right here. So head back into the vent. And this time, go ahead and head straight to where that spider web is. And as you can see, here is the fan with a blinking red, or sorry, green three panel just to the left. Hit the button on the panel, and a little bridge will extend from the valve across the way. Interact with the valve to go to it. Hold down X to spin it, and you want to wait until the arrow just above it turns so that it is now facing upward. Alright, so now the fan will start going in the reverse direction, which will now blow air up instead of sucking the air down. And as you remember, we did see that blueprint piece inside of the fan earlier, so that's where we're going to go pick up now. So go through the door across the room, interact with the stairs on the left hand side, and there's the blueprint on the ground by the vent. So pick up the blueprint piece. Head back inside, all the way back to the room that we started in. Alright, interact with the blueprint on the wall. Place the blueprint piece. <laughs> and make a note of the code that appears for security level number four. And once again, this is going to be different for you. It is going to be different for everybody. Make sure you are noting down what you are seeing on your screen, not what is showing in the video. So this one is mine. It is not yours. <laughs> Just make sure you note yours. So exit out of here, head back through the vent. Right, and then head right, go straight, and then head through the door straight across the way, and up the stairs on the left, and this time take the path to the right, and as you remember that box we opened earlier is going to have the monitor we need to access security level 4, so after this cutscene is done we'll go ahead and get that done. Alright, so once you have control, zoom in on the monitor and place the CD in the CD slot and put in the code that was on your game, not the one that I'm putting in right now because it will be different. And then hit enter and I put mine in wrong. <laughs> Alright, so once you get it right, wait for the CD to pop out and then pick it up. And then head back on inside. Alright, so now go into the elevator and go down to the basement floor one, which is the negative one button. And now we can access the door straight across, which is going to be Ruby's little hideout. So hit the button on the blinking panel and go inside. All 
All right, and while you're here, interact with the rock on the right to open up the top. Press the red button. And some stairs will appear, but don't go up those just yet. Instead, go around the left side of that little platform. And then interact with the fireplace. Interact with the fire poker. And a little box will appear. Open up the box, pick up the lighter, and then pick up the diamond key. And head back to the stairs that we just unveiled. Go up the stairs. Interact with the desk. Hit the middle button. And here we have the computer that will open up. So interact with the monitor to zoom in. And we need a password. So if you hit forgot password, you'll see it is the kitty's name, which we saw earlier it was Onyx. So go ahead and put in Onyx to access the computer and just read the first email up on top. You can hit X to speed up the text here if you want to. You don't have to. it's asking you to download the message which we need a USB stick to do and we do not have one so in order to get that go ahead and exit out of the hideout you can leave the computer up because we'll just be coming back here in a minute so all the way back and then go back to floor zero and then go through the doorway marked with the green two on the right side and head all the way into the back of the room where the key fell into the beaker and you're going to attach the hose to the red hose on the table here and then light it with the lighter and now we can go ahead and grab that key so pick up the key and exit out of here and just super quick while we're here, as you see on the wall, there is another panel with a blinking four. Go ahead and zoom in on that and hit the button and you'll see the monitor that we need to access security level five with, which we can't do until next chapter. So just keep that in mind that that is where that will happen. Exit out of this room, go back into the elevator, go back to basement floor one, which is the negative one and back into Ruby's hideout. All right, go inside, go up the stairs, and just below the computer, you will see a drawer with a lock on it. The key goes into that lock that we just picked up. Open up the drawer, pick up the tape, and then check out the receipt from the Spy Buy Direct store. Um, you need to make a note of the account number that is showing here. This again will be different for everybody. It is randomly generated across every playthrough. So just make sure you note your six numbers showing here as they most likely will not match mine. So once you have those, exit out of the lair or the hideout. Excuse me. And now we're gonna go back to Ruby's house. So back to the elevator. Floor zero. All right, and once you're here, go ahead and interact with the lever just to the left of the door because we need to change the room back to the original setting. Click on the TV to zoom in on it, and now you have the TV remote, so use that on the TV itself. And you need to note the phone number that shows um, for the Spy Buy Direct store. And again, this is going to be different for everybody. So just make sure you write down the number that is showing for you. It is the 555 dash and then four randomly generated numbers. So once you have that, exit out of the TV. And then head to the other side of the room and flip the lever again to change the room back to the previous setting and interact with the chute on the left to go back to Ruby's house. All 
Okay, head up the stairs, go through the left room, and now we need to call the spy by direct store, so interact with the phone. Hit the speakerphone to turn it on, make sure all the buttons are lit up to let you know that it's on, and then dial the number from the TV, which again, it'll be different than the one that I'm dialing right now, just make sure it matches whatever it was showing for you. In here you're going to have three options to buy, um, some nunchucks, the shoe phone, which is required for one of the miscellaneous trophies, but you can't get that one yet, and then of course the USB stick, which is the portable hard drive, so hit three for the USB, and then put in the account number that you saw on the paper in Ruby's hideout, which again is going to be different than the one that I just put in, so once your order is complete, exit out of the study, go back down to the lobby, and ignore the fish tank for now, instead go outside, all the way until you can see the letterbox that we were playing with in chapter one and chapter two. So interact with the letterbox, and as you can see, there is a package. Open it up, pick up the USB drive, and now we're gonna go back to Ruby's hideout to download that message. So go inside her house, interact with the fish tank, Go through the door on the opposite side of the room. Interact with the elevator. Go down to basement room one, which is the negative one. And interact with the panel directly across from you to open up the door to her little hideout. Go inside. Go up the stairs. Interact with the computer and place the USB in the bottom right slot. Hit download and we'll download the message and then we can leave. So pick up your USB, exit out of the hideout, and now we need to warn Agent B about the incoming attack from Ruby. So in order to do that, go ahead and head back to the lift area and then hit floor zero. And then interact with the stairs on the left-hand side. Take the path straight all the way to the communications tower. And interact with the hut on the left-hand side. And then the closed door that is on the right of it. Um, use the key card on the slot just to the left of the door and that'll open it up and as you can see we have two issues which are making the tower go offline one is on the satellite itself and one is on the wire so exit out of here go around the right to the open gate leading to the ladder and you're gonna go up once and go up twice and then interact with the panel that the wire goes behind on the left hand side and you'll peek around and see that it's just been unplugged so click on the wire to plug it back in exit out of that area and finish climbing up the rest of the ladder and here we have a broken antenna on the satellite so use the tape you picked up to fix that little antenna and now we're good to go so head back down to the little hut Zoom in on that little monitor, put the USB stick in the slot on the bottom right, and click send a message. Okay, and once it starts broadcasting, you're just going to back out once and then twice, and you're gonna get a little cutscene, and then we can go forward.
Agent LaRouge, it's time. Good. I see you've received your mission supplies. Assemble them and get prepared. It's time to capture Agent B. Yes, sir. <laughs> we'll be there to extract you soon. Rendezvous via your mini submarine and don't surface so we remain undetected. Uh, of course. 